Hi, my name is Glenn Vallis, and with the help of Lane Redmond, I'm going to be introducing you to the world of frame drums that I've been involved with for the last 10 years or so. The frame drum is a drum whose diameter of the head, the distance from here to here, is greater than the depth of the shell, the distance from here to here. Now this is a loose definition of the frame drum, but it is one that we utilize for the frame drums that we're involved with today. The first frame drum I was introduced to is, of course, the modern Western tambourine. The tambourine is just one specific type of frame drum, but there are many different kinds found all over the world, a lot of different diameters, a lot of different depths of shell, skin types, different types of jingles, some have bells, but they have some common characteristics, and this has led me to start to think about the whole area of frame drums as a family of drums because of their distinctive response to hand technique the, and the fact that they can be used in a lot of different musical settings I've been very attracted to them and have spent the last number of years specifically dealing with frame drums. Now in this video we're going to talk about three specific frame drums and go into depth about the techniques that I use on them and a little bit about some compositions that I've written for the frame drum. The first one that we'll be dealing with is called a boron and the boron is an Irish frame drum that's traditionally played with a stick but I'm using my hands using Middle Eastern and South Indian techniques. Second we'll deal with a frame drum called a tar and this is one that's made by the Remo Drum Company. And third, we'll have a frame drum called the Rick, which is a Middle Eastern frame drum, and was really the one that inspired me to become more and more involved with this instrument because of the sophistication of the techniques that are used by the traditional Middle Eastern players. It really made me see the vast potential of this instrument. So I hope you enjoy the instruction that follows and your introduction to the world of frame drumming. This is the frame drum called a boron. This is an Irish drum that's traditionally played with a stick, but we're going to be doing some South Indian and Middle Eastern style drumming on it. I've been using this drum for a number of years and have found it to be very conducive to expressive drumming. There's a lot of different tones, pitches, and sounds that can be gotten from the boron. So I'll be showing you some of the basic strokes that I do on this and show you a simple rhythm. And from that you can derive some, own, some of your own experimentation. The first stroke is called doom. And this stroke is done with the thumb of the right hand. The forearm makes a turning motion. And the idea in Doom is that you want to have an open tone that's the lowest drum, that the, the lowest tone that the drum can produce. So you see how the thumb bounces off immediately and lets the drum ring. also see how the base of the thumb is strikes the rim of the head. This gives you a reference point to know where to strike. This stroke is called doom. The next stroke is called tock, and this is done with the fourth finger of the right hand and also the fourth finger of the left hand. Talk is a high pitch rim tone. You can see where my thumb is touching my fourth finger. That's the point where the finger hits the head. The motion of the hand is very similar to the motion in Doom. It's a turning motion with the forearm. That's called talk. 
We also have talk in the left hand. Talk in the left hand uses the thumb to help brace the drum. The weight of the left arm helps to stabilize the drum. And the left hand, fourth finger, is parallel with the rim. So again, this is a high-pitched rim tone. So we can do talk with either the right hand or the left hand. So we have the lowest sound that the drum makes, and talk is the highest sound. We also have a slap, which is done towards the center of the drum, and the idea is to not bounce off. So the hand is slightly cupped. And this is a dampened, muffled stroke. So now we have doom, we have talk, and we have the slap. Okay. Another stroke that can be done, an unusual sound, is a slapping, is a brushing sound that's done with the fingernails. Another version of that can be done with just the pads. Okay, now we have three or four sounds. We have actually four at this point. Doom, talk, the slap, and we have brushing. Now there's another stroke that I learned from studying Azerbaijani drumming, and this is called Chirtma which is the Persian word for snap. Just like you snap your fingers, you're utilizing this same kind of motion on the drum. And this is another type of talk. Now this stroke is done very lightly because of its very nature, it's very loud stroke, so you don't have to try to do it loud. You just do it light. That's, top, that's the snap in the right hand. You can also do a snap in the left hand with the fourth finger, with the third finger, you can also do snaps with the little finger, so each of these snaps has a different sound quality. So that gives you a lot of different uh, pitches that you can draw from. Now I'm going to show you a simple rhythm that utilizes some of these strokes so that on your own you can experiment and get used to moving from dooms to talks to slaps. Now this is an eight beat rhythm. I'll play it very slowly at first. take the first eight of this pattern and isolate that so that we can uh, show you more simply what's going to happen here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have a doom on one, a talk on two, a slap on three, a doom on four, a talk on five, a slap on six, doom on seven, and a talk on eight.
So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the first eight. The second eight is like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now if we combine those two patterns, we have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do, talk, slap, do, talk, slap, do, talk, do, talk. Brush, 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 brush. So I'll do this pattern a little bit faster to show you how it sounds when it has a little bit more speed. in this pattern is the slap do. That takes a little practice going slowly from the slap to the do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to make sure that you stay on the slap long enough to really get a muffled sound and then immediately go to the do. So you can isolate that by just playing the slap do, slap do over and over again. type of unusual technique that I commonly use on the bow rod is this sliding technique. By wetting my finger and applying some kind of sticky substance to the head, you can get a very nice drone sound. And by doing a figure eight pattern, you can do a continuous drone sound. So you can see that the Boron has a wide variety of sounds and types of tonal colors that are possible from this instrument. So I hope you enjoy experimenting with it.
Now I'm going to show you about the tar drum. This is a style of drum that's found in North Africa. The one I have in my hand has a plastic head and it also has a thumb hole. So you insert your thumb in this hole, your left hand. If you think of the drum as a clock face, your left hand is at six o'clock. Your right hand thumb is at nine o'clock. Now this thumb is going to be doing pivoting while you're doing the three basic strokes, the doom, the talk, and the slap. So this is an important motion on this style of drum. You also tilt the drum slightly away from your body as opposed to this, it's slightly away so that that stabilizes the drum a little bit. Okay, the first stroke is doom and doom is done with the fourth finger of the right hand. And just like on the Boran, we're trying to get a low open sound. The next stroke we have is called talk, and talk is done with the fourth finger again on the rim. Now you can see the pivot motion happening on doom and on talk. That motion happens also on the slap, which is done with the hand slightly cupped. In the left hand, the fourth finger does talk right on the rim, high pitch rim tone. Okay, now we're going to learn a simple seven beat pattern, and this is going to be using the dooms, the talks, and the slaps. So that goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doom, talk, 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 slap, talk, talk. Doom, talk, 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 slap. So now we're going to use a technique of walking while we're playing. The idea behind this is that we're going to try to help us to develop a strong inner pulse. So while we're playing this odd meter. First we'll do this in quarter notes. If we think of our walking as quarter notes, the sound will be like this. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doom, talk, 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 slap, talk, talk. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left. Now we can also do this 7B pattern in eighth notes. We're still walking in quarters, but we're playing in eighths. That sounds like this. First, I'll count it for you. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 This rhythm can also be done in 16th notes while we're doing the quarter note walking. That sounds like this. One, two, ready, go.
same rhythm, we're going to add some snaps. These are the same type of snaps as we did on the Boran earlier. That in the right hand is exactly the same with the third finger against the thumb. We place the thumb, brace it against the frame of the drum, and snap lightly. Now we can also snap in the left hand in this position. In that snap, we take the little finger of the left hand and place it on top of the fourth finger and snap the finger on the rim. Now first you do this slowly and very lightly. Now we're going to use those snaps as accents in our seven beat rhythm. We're going to put a right hand snap on three and a left hand snap on seven. And first I'll do this slowly at the quarter note level. We're walking like this. Ready, go. One. same thing at the eighth note level. That sounds like this. One, two, ready, and go. Sixteenth note level, the counting is like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 and it sounds like this while we're playing. Ready, go. are some of the basic techniques on the tar drum and now I'll do a short solo that incorporates some of these techniques in my own playing.
I'm now going to be demonstrating the tambourine called the Rick. This is an Egyptian tambourine which has some unusual features and a very elaborate technique. So I'll try to simplify some of the ideas as far as the playing technique and the hold of this instrument. Now the instrument physically has fish skin head, solid brass jingles, and very elaborate inlay. So we'll start off with the three sounds which are the same as that you've, we've done before on the tar and the boron. We have the doom talk and the slap. The difference is, is that in this drum, there are different fingers doing those sounds. Doom is done with the first finger of the right hand. So again, you have that open tone, but in this case, the finger is the first. The talk is done with the same finger as before on the other drums, the fourth finger. And this is again a high pitch rim tone. The slap is done with the cupped hand near the center. Okay, one of the challenges of playing this instrument in this style is the holding hand position. So I'm going to try to show you simply the way the instrument is held in the left hand. The thumb of the left hand is pressing against the inner jingle. The first finger of the left hand is pressing against the rim. So you have a vice-like grip that you're developing in the left hand. This takes a little bit of endurance to maintain this grip while you're playing with the right hand. Now the other unusual feature of this drum is the fact that you play on the jingles. This stroke is called tick. In the left hand, the left hand is gripping the drum, but at the same time is able to use the fourth finger to tap on the jingle in the stroke called tick. And of course the right hand is free so the right hand can also stroke on the jingle for tick. This is the fourth finger. An unusual stroke that can be done with this technique is by using the fourth, third, and second finger of the right hand and ending with the fourth finger of the left hand, you can get an interesting trill. So this is four, three, two, four. Okay, now I'm going to show you a basic Middle Eastern dance rhythm called Masmodi. And Masmodi is in eight, and I'll play it for you slowly so you can hear the sound of it all together, and then I'll divide up the rhythm into two parts so we can isolate the fingers and the sounds. It sounds like this. So you can hear that doom with the first finger of the right hand is on one, two, and five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doom, taka doom, taka taka ta, taka taka doom, taka taka ta, taka taka ta. 
So now we'll take the first four beats of Masmati, sound like this. That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The second four beats sound like this. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, tuck. Doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, tuck. The whole beat all together. Doom, tucka, doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, tuck. Doom, tucka, doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, doom, tucka, tucka, ta, tucka, tucka, tuck. Okay. Another wonderful feature of this drum is that you can play it in different positions. There's a position that's used for softer playing. We call it the soft position. And in this position, the thumbs of both hands are pressing against the inside of the tambourine. You can see the right hand thumb presses, the left hand thumb presses, and they're both pressing in exactly the same manner. So the right hand and the left hand hold the drum in the same way. The front rim is pressing against the first finger of the right hand and also the first finger of the left hand in the same spot, midway between the first and second joint. Now you have the three sounds, the doom, talk, and slap again, but they're done slightly differently. The doom is done in this position with the fourth finger of the right hand. So again, you're trying to get the lowest sound and bouncing off immediately. Now the talk is done with the fourth fingers on the rim again. The difference is in this position, the first fingers of either hand are pressing on the head. This makes for a better talk because it raises the pitch of the head. So you can see the fingers pressing. When you do the doom, the fingers come up. So this is the challenge of this position, to get used to going from doom to talk and raising these and lowering these fingers automatically, depending whether you're doing doom or talk. Now you can do any of the rhythms that you do in the other position. You can do them in this position. We'll do Masmodi now in the soft position. That sounds like this. One. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doom, taka, doom, taka, taka, ta, taka, taka, doom, taka, taka, ta, taka, taka, ta, ta, doom, taka, doom, taka, taka, ta, taka, taka, doom. So now I'm going to demonstrate a solo on the rick, and this will show you some of the more refined techniques involving shaking in the left hand, switching from the saw position to the louder position, and various compositional ideas that I've got from playing on this, one of the most fascinating of the many tambourines that I've studied.
Now, Lane and I are going to be performing a piece called Internal Combustion. This is a composition for two frame drums. In this case, it would be two gavals. The idea behind the piece was to provide a format for improvisation. So what I did was string together some interesting rhythms, and we call this the cycle. So by stringing together these cells of rhythmic information, you create a larger cell in this cell we call the cycle. And this cycle is going to be heard throughout the internal combustion composition. We keep returning to this cycle. And the cycle is composed of rhythms. First of all, it's made up of 10, then 9, and then 8. So the first rhythm is a 10-beat rhythm called Samai. And this rhythm is subdivided 3, 2, 2, 3. This is a traditional Arabic rhythm. Now I'm going to have dem uh, Lane demonstrate this rhythm so that you can recognize it when it's passing by through the uh, performance. So, one, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Six and seven, this rhythm, same rhythm again. One, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the first rhythm in the cycle, and this is called Samai. The second rhythm is a nine beat rhythm, and this is not a traditional rhythm. It uses an unusual technique that is we call brushing, and this is just brushing with the fingernails on the skin of the frame, or the skin of the uh, head. So this is a nine beat rhythm. One, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The last rhythm is an eight beat rhythm and this is also just a non-traditional rhythm, and that sounds like this. One, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're going to demonstrate how all these rhythms are done in sequence in the cycle. First, you have two tens, then you have a nine, and then you have an eight. I'll count along while Lane plays the whole cycle. One, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the whole cycle of 10, 10, 9, 8. And throughout the performance that we're going to be doing of this piece, internal combustion, you'll be hearing this cycle. We'll keep returning to the cycle. What happens as far as the inner structure of the piece is that there are cues that I give that Lane is listening for. When she hears these cues, that might mean stay in the 10. 
play the tin over and over again. While she's doing that, then I might improvise or do something special that goes along with the tin. Or I might do a cue that says, stay in the eight. So Lane will play the nine, or I'm going to demonstrate the nine cue. So Lane will play the nine, and then I'll play my secondary part, which goes along with that, and then I'll play the cue, which means go back to the cycle. Okay. One, two, ready, play. <laughs> performance of internal combustion for two frame drums. In this case, it would be two gavals. <laughs> 